Welcome to the Season 2, Episode 2 of Your Brain Rebalanced radio show, where we talk about all <laughs> things porn addiction related. I'm one of your guest hosts, Noah bristol Zell Church, and I'm on here with Charlie and Jack. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Uh, I'm Charlie, Charlie Marka, and um, we're doing uh, Episode 2. Noah was kind enough to jump on the show with us. It was a lot of fun last time, so it's good to have you back. Good to be and, back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Jack, uh, aka as Ape Man on the boards. Yeah, um, Noah it's a pleasure is to be Spangler back. on the boards. <laughs> Spangler on the boards. So yeah, both of you. Jack was in on the first episode, which made us sad, but he's back. It's good to be back. What have you been up to, Jack? We kind of talked about what me and Daniel were up to, but um, oh. what have you been up to in the four or five months since? It's been a whirlwind. I moved out to L.A. Thought, well, thought I was going to move out to L.A. Ended up vacationing in L.A. Uh, came back, decided that I wanted to go back to school. Uh, applied, got in. School's actually tomorrow, first day of classes. Nice, man. I uh, picked up a girlfriend, and it was <laughs> awesome. Things that Life's been good. Life's been good. Life's been real good. Yeah. Um... And yeah, that's what's been up with me in a nutshell. We pulled you out of retirement. Right, <laughs> right. Came out of retirement. It was for a good cause. Oh, yeah. It's for an ongoing cause. Sounds good, though. Sounds really good. What else? Yeah. Are, what are you going to for school for again? I'm um, going for video game design. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Cool. I discovered, I discovered while I was in L.A. that uh, my local state college is actually one of the top schools in the nation for game design. Is it so like a two or three year program or? Uh, it's a it's a four year program. Okay. But since I already had an uh, since I already had an undergraduate degree, uh, I don't have to take any generals this time around. So I'm jumping right into the meat and potatoes, as so to speak. So you moved to Los Angeles to learn okay. that your home state was the best place for your subject. Yeah, it was. Nice. It worked out really nicely. I mean, yeah, funny how life I, works like sometimes. Yeah, I'm, it ended up being that I had to move away so that I could really appreciate what I had to begin with. Mm-hmm. Damn, I missed you, Jack. <laughs> oh, I missed you too, man. I missed. I missed you too. It's good to hear you doing well, though. That's awesome. Thanks. So, how about you, Noah? What have you been up to? Oh, uh, lots. Um, a lot of our viewers or listeners or whatever they are might have seen a video I put up on YouTube. I spoke at the Mystery Box show a few months ago, and that was an experience for sure. It's this thing in Portland. I live in Portland, Oregon, and it's a pretty liberal place. It's a live storytelling event focused on sex and sexuality, and Gary Wilson connected me with the producer of the show. We got to talking, and he wanted me to tell my story, so I did. Cool. I'll link it. I'll link it in yeah, the because okay. it, it was so cool when I watched it. And you're so good at public speaking too. I was amazed. Yeah, and it's had pretty good response on YouTube. And I was, I'm just glad that people are taking some inspiration from it. And I try to get people who have gone through this journey to talk more about it, not necessarily out in public like that, but at least with their friends and other people, because there are a lot of people out there suffering who just have no idea that this is a thing. For sure. That, they yeah. can't be addicted to porn or that it can cause symptoms. Yeah. Yeah, it was excellent. I, I do, Have you done a lot of public speaking before? Because you were so fluid up there. Uh, not a lot. I don't have any official training or anything like that, but I tend to do it whenever I get the chance. Nice. I really enjoy it. Good for you. That's, a, that's like the number one fear for people, I think, is public speaking, right? Yeah. Most common well, fear. The things that are most exciting are the things you fear the most. Growing up, I definitely had a fear of public speaking. Yeah. I'm also afraid of heights, which is why I jump off cliffs. I must have been but, um, terrified of porn. <laughs> <laughs> just just I'm terrified. <laughs> no, but I, there, there's truth to that, though, definitely. Well, I mean, you yeah. joke about that, but isn't the reason why we turn to it uh, as kids is because we don't want to have to talk to a girl? That's true. That's true. And I, 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 and I have to say at least part of the attraction I had to it was a little bit of I knew I shouldn't have access to this like I knew it was wrong mm -hmm. that was a little bit of it forbidden fruit exactly exactly 
Okay, so Noah, you have some topic ideas that you wrote down. I also have some. Marnia sent me a list of some ideas too, but we can just go over stuff. I know there's like three or four questions too on the various websites mm-hmm. that we post this. So, but I, I'm interested in hearing your ideas. Yeah, well, while I was waiting for the show to start, I just wrote down about a dozen. Let's see. Uh, relapse is one thing I wanted to talk about. I know it's probably been touched on before, but. Mm-hmm. I yeah. want to talk my, my, about my personal experience now because from January 1st, 2014, all the way through to September, I didn't, like, I committed January 1st, I didn't have a single relapse. So I didn't really know what it was to relapse in my own personal journey. Mm-hmm. And in September, I felt like I was at a place where I chose to re explore that part of my life. It's not that I wanted to go back to who I was before, but I wanted to see how masturbation would affect me and how por- looking at porn would affect me after all that time, after I'd resensitized. Ooh, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. Yeah. yeah, and how did it affect you? It was powerful. Like, as soon as it became a possibility in my mind to look at porn again, I was hard. And I paced for about a half an hour out in the hallway, Whoa. completely hard the entire time, considering whether or not this was something I really wanted to do. Yeah. And then I, then I did it, and... I learned a lot from it. Interesting. Wow. Just that sort of the anticipation of it was that arousing. Yeah, it was like I was jonesing for a drug. It was extremely powerful. Wow. Were, were you like shaking and stuff too? Yeah. 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 And I masturbated a few times to porn. I masturbated a few times without in that couple week period. And at the end of it, I knew that it wasn't something I wanted in my life for sure. Yeah. What did and you feel like? What did I feel like? Yeah. I didn't feel like super brain foggy or depressed or anything about it, but I knew afterwards, like after I had used the porn, that it was just an empty experience and it was nothing compared to the real sexual experiences and loving experiences I had had and that it, I knew how easily it would be to go back to what I was before. Yeah. And I did not want that. Of course... Once you relapse, once, once you allow that a possibility, at least for me, it's not so easy to shut that door again. Yeah. So for the next several weeks, I think once when I came home drunk and once when I was depressed, I looked at porn again. I don't think I masturbated to it, but once I opened that door, it was harder to shut it again. But Mm -hmm. it's been like, I don't know, 130 days since then and no real problems or crises. And I kind of think of it as... Have you ever, have you guys ever tried to do a handstand? I can't say that I have. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, no. when I teach people to do handstands, the thing that holds them back the most is the fear of falling over on their backs and hurting themselves, right? Mm-hmm. And to get over that, I tell them just to fall because you have to learn how to fall right. And if you can fall right, you just roll up, you get up, you dust yourself off, and you do another handstand. Yeah. And then once you're over that fear of falling, it's only then that you can really execute a good handstand because you're not afraid to go straight up and down, right? If you're afraid, you'll always be leaning back towards your feet because you want to catch yourself on your feet. And now that I've relapsed, I'm not afraid of it anymore, and I feel like I'm much more free. Cool. Cool. I'm curious, Noah. Um, I'm not actually that familiar with your story. Mm-hmm. So, would you mind telling me what what was your what were you trying to accomplish by taking on this uh, this challenge? Not handstands, but you know, no fat. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I had been eighteen with my first real girlfriend, I had severe PIED. I'd never had sex because I'd always been unable to, and I started using porn at age nine and used it regularly throughout my young life. So that's really what the trigger was for me that I needed to do something about this. And when I first searched for answers, you know, back in 2008, none of this stuff was on the internet. So all I found out was that it was in my head and that wasn't helpful. Yeah. And it wasn't yeah. until late 2013 that I discovered the truth. And that's why I undertook the journey. Yeah. And for those who are unfamiliar, did you, did you uh, end up accomplishing your goal? Did you cure yourself? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, the difference 
just in sexual experiences now between now and before I quit porn is just night and day. Yeah. Like before it was thing. like I was numb and it did nothing for me. I didn't feel anything. And now it's a sublime experience. Have you noticed since you tried it for a couple of weeks and have you had a sexual experience after that and kind of seen how that feels? Have you, were you affected at all or was it minimal? After that couple of weeks actually I went to the worst flat line of my entire journey. Whoa. Yeah. Just absolutely no feeling down there. Absolutely no interest in sex. And of course, at that time, I started to have another sexual opportunity with this beautiful lady. <laughs> so I had to explain all over again what was going on. Yeah. But uh, being with her for within a couple of weeks, I had rewired again and come out of my flat line and sex felt better than ever. So it was like I was on an accelerated timeline. That's incredible. That's really interesting. Huh. That's very interesting. Yeah, no joke. Have you guys had similar you, learning experiences from relapse? I've actually never relapsed, so I don't know for sure. <laughs> never relapsed. Never The man relapsed. who never relapsed. And you've had a girlfriend this entire time in your journey, right? No, 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 no. Oh. I got a girlfriend about a year into my journey. Okay. Yeah, and I did the first three months. Uh, I did the first three months, and then I MO'd without uh, porn. And that I didn't really, I don't really count that as a relapse, but, and then mm -hmm. I did nine months, no PMO at all. And then I got a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it's been, for me, it's been pretty good so far. I'm, I, I don't know. I appreciate what you did with that experience. I don't know if I trust myself in handling. Yeah. That. It's not something I really advised. Yeah. People. Yeah. At least for me, I don't regret it. Yeah. I don't think you should. I mean, why would you? Yeah. But, yeah, for me, in terms of the last four or five months, things have been good, just on the slow and steady upward. It's nice. Nowadays, I would say, I mean, I had a really, really, really severe case of porn do CD2, but I'm, I mm -hmm. think, you know, every time I have been intimate with my girlfriend, I've been able to get erect in some capacity or another. Sometimes it's slower than others, but... Uh, it's definitely just slow and steady improvement. I mean, this is way better than three years ago where I couldn't even get erect to porn, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> slow, and for me, it's been ingrained, and I've, I used it a lot, and I had my first instance of porn and UCD, I think, when I was 17 or 16, and I didn't do anything about it until I was almost 22, so. It's going to mm -hmm. be a long journey. Hmm. But it's good, though. I have nothing to complain about. And I'm better each month than I was the last month. So, yeah, so I find the point, longer, the longer I go, the more new things I learn about myself and my sexuality. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. Go ahead, Jack. You were gonna say something. Yeah, it's been two years since you started, right, Charlie? Uh, it's been like two, yeah, over two years. Two years and two years. three months. Four two months. years, never relapsed. Yeah. And you feel you feel cured. Uh, no. I was just talking to Daniel about this uh, on the last show, but I would say if there was a version of me that never, ever looked at porn, and right. there was the me now, I'm not that version, at least what I would expect that version to be. I still... As far as erectile quality? Or? Yeah, erectile quality, and also just, I don't know, just like general effects of what porn, heavy porn use for 13 years starting in your childhood does. Because I, I still suffer from sometimes from, you know, poor perspectives, I think, on sexuality. or like, it, I, I can still feel it sometimes, but it is it is always better. And like I said before, each month is better than the last. And that's not me just trying to sugarcoat it or be positive. I do feel better each month. But it's going to be a long process. Mm. Yeah, because I was interested. Because I was listening to the first episode of the second season uh the episode before this yeah, yeah and i'm pretty sure i heard you self-identify as a as a porn addict which confused me because mm -hmm. it's been so long right i think i i think i buy into that two notion years that once an addict always an addict sort of really yeah mm, interesting but not in the <laughs> sense that you are going to uh it's, I think you can completely recover and be the person you were 
feeling wise and erection quality wise before looking at porn but i feel like you will slip back and you could slip back into that easier than anybody else and that's where the once an addict mm-hmm. always an addict mentality comes from and so i always remind myself of that I, that's like a important reminder for me that i i'm not able to handle this i don't think and that's why it's not a part of my life hmm. but yeah, that's just I, me that helps me a ton right. i wrote an article I mean, that said basically exactly yeah. that same thing about that same idea yeah, that you can become, you can move past your addiction and that you're no longer constantly on the edge or thinking about it. That's, yeah, that's what I was trying to say, yeah. But as compared to someone who is never addicted, if you open that door again, it'll be very easy to slip back to your former self. Right. And I knew, and I knew, and part of the reason I do that is I know that people who are addicted to substances refer to themselves that way too, and it's helpful for mm-hmm. them. That's something we learned in one of my classes. Uh, so that's just what I do and it doesn't bother me at all really to say that I feel comfortable mm-hmm. saying that but do you see it differently Jack? I do <laughs> <laughs> I, I do I mean I what different things work for different people obviously and I I know that we you and I and uh, and we had different reasons for taking on this challenge uh, you and Noah, uh, it was it was ED for both of you. It wasn't ED for me. Yeah, that's it right. It was it was motivation and confidence mm-hmm. and just the ability to interact with women, mm-hmm. uh, which I couldn't do. Um, and perhaps, perhaps it well, for me it's a I see porn as sexual junk food. It's mm-hmm. porn is to your sexuality what a Big Mac is to your body. Yeah. Um, and a Big Mac is always going to be sublimely tasty. I mean, it's full of it's packed with salt and sugar. It's a super normal stimulus. And if you eat a Big Mac, you're going to love it the whole way through. Mm-hmm. But and if you choose to eat Big Macs regularly, you're going to become fat. Just like if you choose to consume porn regularly and without the company of actual women. Uh, you will become sexually fat in terms, <laughs> uh, in in that you will be unfit. Is that an F fat yeah. or a pH fat? I gotta know. <laughs> Definitely the F. Because <laughs> okay. you, you will be unfit. Yeah. Uh, you That's won't be able to, to, won't be able to relate to women. You won't be able to perform with women. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're just unfit. So I see porn as a bad habit. A habit that you don't want to get into. I don't see myself as an addict. I, I, I used to. Mm-hmm. But for me, that kind of labeling of myself is not helpful. But if it's helpful for you, then it's helpful for you. I, yeah, think, and I don't think there's a right or wrong point. answer. Yeah, I agree. And I think there's two different, there's two different camps with that, too. And I think I think part of w- what you lean towards does have to, like you said, Jack, deals with your, the severity of your... Uh, your habits or addiction or compulsion or whatever but I think ultimately just whatever works for you you have to sort of align with that idea so yeah and I mean oh man (laughs) lately uh, porn came porn has come back into my life which kind of uh, has has shaped my views lately because um, I started seeing this girl and <laughs> uh, for for a while, I didn't need porn at all because I had where I was seeing this girl, and it was great. And then she told me that uh, she wanted me to look at porn. Hmm. For her, it was a turn on. Like she wanted to do stuff while I watched porn. And I was like, "Oh, babe, <laughs> you don't you don't know what you're." Uh, and I had to tell her about the whole thing front wow. to back, and. Uh, but she persuaded me that it could be it could be used positively and so it's re-entered my life as part of my sex life and it works Mm -hmm. and so I mean it's been really strange these past couple weeks because I found that I don't think that I can destroy or eliminate my uh, like you said Charlie you'll never be Exact. You'll never be the person that you would be if you had never seen porn. 
But for me, I've accepted that I have – I've accepted that porn is arousing to me. I, I can't destroy that and I can't destroy what turns me on. Uh, that will always be a part of me. But I can channel it into a tool that enhances intimacy. Mm -hmm. And is it a hard rule for you that you only use it with her? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> shit, dude. The first, the first time that I actually, I, uh, <laughs> that I actually pulled up some porn and 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 used it with her, I, you know, she fell asleep and I was wired. <laughs> I was, I was lying next to her and I was just like, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, and but I didn't, I didn't, I, uh, I didn't relapse. Mm -hmm. It took, it took probably thirty minutes of just lying in the dark, I uh, willing myself not to relapse, but I didn't, and. Uh, it subsided, and I Wait. think that I can. Lately, I think I can incorporate it uh, sustainably into my into my life. Mm -hmm. And so, with that, I kind of left. I left. Uh, I left no fat behind, hmm. and I consider myself retired. <laughs> Did I have a question about that? So she sure. convinced you. To watch porn with her because she thought it would be hot for you two to yeah, do that, right? It turns her on. And then she fell asleep and just left you hanging. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, she didn't leave me hanging. Okay, uh, okay. But after we were done, you know, she fell asleep. Okay, and yeah. And, and even did. after orgasm, you were still wired on that porn right. high. Right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. No, that was the scary thing was because afterwards, my immediate impulse was to was to find my phone and just and just and just. PMO. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I know that it still exerts a powerful influence over me, but I do believe that I can channel it into a positive thing. Interesting. Well, that's definitely where that individual aspect comes in because I don't think uh, that would ever work for me. I don't think it would work for me either. I just, mm -hmm. I, there's no way. But it's different for everybody. It's totally different yeah, from everybody. Absolutely. There's no right or wrong with it, you know. And I, I do wholeheartedly believe that some people can use pornography in a positive way in their life. Mm -hmm. As long as you're genuinely happy with where you are, then who the hell is gonna challenge you on that? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Oh, 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 guys. Um. One of the one of the other <laughs> users on the forum sent me. A message. Uh, I get I get a email notification whenever somebody sends me a personal message. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good to know. Send me a question, and I wanted to read it for you and get your take. Okay, we have yeah. that's a good idea. We could just go straight into questions because we have some on our thread too. Perfect. All right. So this is from Tyler's Dream. Sorry, Tyler's Dream, if you didn't want to be identified as your pseudonym. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have a question. How do you deal with yourself when you reach the 14 plus days mark? I find myself prone to relapse because I'm very bored and and crazy for dopamine. I'm just wondering if you uh, if you do anything special in this situation. And then he went on. He sent me a second message, and he uh, went on to say, uh, "I also don't know if there's something wrong with the quote battling porn unquote frame." Worrying about relapsing, managing the mm -hmm. environment, filtering, filtering, etc. I have been in the last few days before my relapse. I tend to think that if I'm struggling, I'm doing something wrong. Like I'm not fully committed or something. Do you agree with that? Or is it something normal? Well, let's start with the first one, I guess. Which is, what do you do to do, channel your energy, right? In a productive way and away from thinking about relapse. Mm -hmm. And... It's been a long time since I was at a day 14 mark, but I think this applies at any point in your journey. And that's that we need a mission and we need goals in our life. Yes. And I think the hardest part about that is finding what's really important to you and finding out what your goals are. And that's, I think, an essential part of recovering from any addiction because leaving behind an addictive substance leaves a hole in your life. Mm -hmm. And you have to fill that with something good. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Just sort of uh, develop some new passions and habits, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I love running. Running is something that really, really, really helped me. Has helped me since I 
quit porn two years and three months ago. I don't think I could have quit porn without becoming a runner, honestly. Yeah. And I tell everybody to do that. It just helps. It not only fills like, you know, 30 minutes, an hour's worth of time every other day, but it it helps you sleep at night, which can be an issue for people who are recovering from any addiction. And if you're an anxious person too, it like go on an hour and a half long run and you will not have any anxiety in you that day. I guarantee you run it. for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> only, no, 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 no. But like, okay, you know, once every two weeks I'll go on a long run. I want to do a half marathon sometimes. So you got to be on the treadmill for an hour, an hour and a half to do that. So, wow. yeah. Yeah, so that was definitely a positive thing. I also learned playing guitar was a lot of fun, too. That's a good way to keep your fingers busy with something else, get my drift. But, <laughs> Do you have hey, some more hey. thoughts on that, Jack? I, I agree wholeheartedly with you, Noah. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I think that a lot of people – well, I can speak only to my own experience. But I know that when I started uh, the journey of quitting porn, I had – a waiting mindset. I thought, uh, porn is bad. I accept that. So I just have to wait it out. I stop watching porn and I wait. Hmm. And the longer I wait, the better it will be. Uh, the problem with that is that if you relapse, then uh, if you relapse and the only thing that you've been doing is waiting, then it's very easy to think that you've lost everything. Yeah. The only thing that you have to you is a day counter and you like, I'm day 14, man. And then you relapse, then you're nothing. It feels like you've lost everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the big thing that changed in the last two months thereabouts was I stopped waiting and I started working. I, mm -hmm. You, you really need to find something positive to do in your life. You can't just sit in a room on your hands. Maybe if you sit in a room on your hands for 90 days, maybe something will be different about you. But I think it's a lot easier to find a goal and something that you want to achieve. Because then even if you do relapse, like, uh, okay, uh, a couple days ago, I relapsed. Um, and... But it was different than the other relapses because the next day I woke up and I had a and I had a girlfriend, and I was and I'd gotten into school, and I had a house. Like these were all things that I worked on, and they weren't destroyed by the relapse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No fap unlocks the prison cell, but you still got to walk out and collect your belongings and get a job and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's about yeah, so it's about changing the life, you know, not just like counting days. Changing your life. Absolutely. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> when, what was the uh, second part of that question? It was... Uh, if you're struggling, does that mean you're doing it wrong? Is that right? I said, I don't uh, know if there's something wrong with the battling porn frame, worrying about relapsing, managing my environment. Uh, I tend to think that if I'm struggling, I'm doing something wrong. Do you agree with that, or is it something normal? Hmm, that's a tough one, because I've definitely felt like I was struggling during certain portions of my reboot. I'd uh, say that requires a balance. Yeah. Because if you just start off this journey kind of cavalier, not worrying about it, you, you might do well, but most people I've seen do that just go back to porn mm -hmm. because they didn't work hard enough to make it an important enough goal in their life. So at least at the beginning for the first few months, I think you do have to really devote a lot of thought to it change yeah. your environment in ways that are conducive to your changes that you're trying to make mm -hmm. and learn how to battle those urges. And the only way you're going to learn to do that is by trying to battle them in different ways. Yeah. I will say, yeah. I mean, the, the first month that I quit porn, it was like day 30 or whatever, I literally did sit on my hands one night. I mean, mm -hmm. I just sat on my hands. I didn't touch <laughs> my hands next to my laptop. <laughs> so, uh, and that was definitely a struggle. <laughs> that was a long night. Yeah. But it's, it is going to be rough. But like Jack said, you can make it a lot easier for yourself by um, finding a way to make the days go quicker and not think about it. You're, it's not going to always, it's not going to like magically make porn go away if you choose to live your life a totally different way, but it will make it easier, I feel like. Yeah, it's a lot easier to not masturbate when you're playing basketball when, with your buddies than when you're sitting on your hands in your room for waiting sure. exactly, for days to go yeah. by. Exactly. Yep. 
got to have something to do. You can't just be yeah. not doing something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you said yeah. that sitting on your hands thing reminded me of this testimony I read on NoFap recently, and I just looked at it again, and the author has deleted his account, but he, his story is basically that he had a rough childhood, and he started using drugs pretty early on in his teenage years, and he was addicted to opiates, cocaine, pot, a lot of pretty hardcore drugs, as well as some of the more vanilla ones like alcohol and porn. And he said he had a moment of crisis when he realized he couldn't live this way anymore and he started eliminating his addictions one by one. And the very last one was porn. And he said that was by far the hardest. Yeah. And I, I've lost count of the number of times I've heard that from people who have recovered from other addictions and said that was... That was easy stuff compared to porn. Me too. I heard that same thing in a couple of recovery stories about guys who were former, like, uh, addicted to alcohol or drugs or whatever, and then they said, hands down, quitting porn was harder. Yeah. Which I thought was really, so, really interesting. If you're out there I mean, and you're, you're making progress, you're struggling, be proud of yourself, because this is this can be very hard. Yeah. It's yeah. a really good point, honestly. Okay, let's see. Somebody else has a question for us. Uh, where is the question, though? Okay. <laughs> you guys are great. Your advice really helped me. Well, I have a question about porn-induced fantasies. You know we often escalate to weird or extreme things in porn, right? Remember, eight man, Jack, talked about all he, he calls out your fantasy bondage stuff, for example. Yeah. I wonder if these fantasies tend to go away after a long time of rebooting. Any of you have experienced this? Some of us are a bit desperate, scared that we are trapped in those fantasies. So how about you? Do you... Okay, that, okay, that's a... This is a really tough thing because I do believe people can be born with fetishes, right? The guy... Wait, wait. So the guy specifically asked about me and bondage? He remembers <laughs> yours the best. Yeah. Nice. I, I, I actually... Yeah, yeah. I well, mean, he did say porn-induced fetish fantasies, right? Right. Um, so those are fantasies that you developed after using porn and being exposed to these things. I can't even remember who I was sexually before porn, if we're being honest. So I don't know what's a fantasy or, or I mean, what's like a true fetish or a porn-induced mm-hmm. fantasy or not. Um, yeah. But I don't know if anybody else has any insight on that. Well, at this point yeah. in our lives, we're all like, we're in our mid-20s, right? I'm 25. I'm Charlie, 20, you're... 23, almost 24. 23. And Noah, you're... 25. Yeah, 25. At this point, our brains our brains were plastic and they were being developed in our teens. They've settled down. We have brains that are pretty much as they're going to be. They're still plastic. Um, but... Yeah, they're still very much plastic. They're just not hyper-reactive as they were in our teenage years. Yeah. Right, right. And when I started, I did, I did have dreams that, that, my, that my fetish... Uh, which is bondage for all you listeners out there. Um, uh, I had dreams that it would that it would go away, and I thought that'd be kind of nice. Um, but now I see it doesn't have to, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. whereas whereas when I was a kid, and even when I started NoFap, I thought, ah, oh, this is a crazy, unnatural thing that has no place in a functioning man's sexuality. That's that. I found that that was very naive. I was really naive because I wanting to dominate something, wanting to dominate someone, is it's got to be natural because there are <laughs> girls out there who want to be dominated. Mm-hmm. I yeah yeah I have such Go a ahead, tough time. Uh, yeah I don't know I don't know if I have anything constructive to say honestly I have such a tough time with this question though because I just. I truly don't know. I really do believe that you can get into, you can have fetishes that have nothing to do with porn. And those are obviously, it's going to be okay. But you don't want to like, I don't know. I I worry sometimes about stuff that I do and if it's influenced on, if it's ingrained from like porn stuff I've seen, I guess. I guess maybe it doesn't have any basis for me to be worried about it, but uh like specific things that I was into, if like I want to do that, I question my intent with it. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'd like to throw out the formal definition of a fetish here is that it's something, it's a sexual um, fixation without which a person cannot get off. 
Ooh. So it's not just an interest, it's like the interest. Gotcha. Oh, cannot get off? Yeah, it's like they need that in order to get off. Oh, well then, never mind. I never had a push. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we can develop kinky interests through porn, but in order to be clinically classified as a fetish, it has to be more extreme than just an interest. Interesting. And for me, I, with porn, developed a lot more interest in violent, rough sex. Mm -hmm. Not to the point of being a fetish, but usually near the end, when I went online to look at porn, that's what I would seek out. Yeah, and I definitely looked at stuff like that too, and that's, I mean, that's just yeah. straight up not okay with me. Some of the stuff I typed into the searches on those sites is just... I would never want to do that in real life. Well, I'm still, I still find that interesting, and I had a partner recently who also found that interesting, or she was very into that actually. So, we explored that. What type of violent extreme stuff, though? <laughs> There's like, uh, you know, a great choked her out. Yes. How much <laughs> detail do you want? Here? Baseball bat. Choking. Yes, that choking was part of it. Landmines. Uh, See, that's not so unnatural. Mm hmm At all. Using a the spanking, using a belt, tying her up, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, these are things that porn actually taught me to think were unnatural, and it's weird to find that it that there is uh, a flip side of the coin, and that and that mm -hmm. it's natural for 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 the other side, the feminine side, to want that. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's it's not something I want every time I have sex. It's just an interest to explore at certain yeah. points when we're both in that mood. And I'm fine with it like that. Dude, Noah, thank you. Thank you. It wasn't until this conversation that I, I realized that I was cured of the fetish all along. It wasn't <laughs> a fetish. You never had a fetish. <laughs> I never had one. It was all in my head. I never had one either. I didn't know that was a definition of a fetish. On a side note, I read this story about this guy who had a fetish for his boot. His boot? His, his boot? Yeah, like his working boot. <laughs> <laughs> his own boot. Yeah. Wait, you say boot singular. Was it the left or the right? I think he. I think it was only one every night. He went to the other one the next night. So, so, he, jer so he jerked off into his boot. Yeah, it was pretty weird. It was a very strange. It was a, a girl. This girl gave a presentation on fetishes, like sexual fetishes in psychology, and she like gave this long quote from this guy who was like talking about romancing his boot. I was laughing. I don't know. I was just not old enough to be there. <laughs> there are some pretty strange fetishes out there. There are some weird ones. We could do a whole episode about that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. My but gosh. Another thing that's interesting is I find that certain things that I was really, really turned on by in porn, I'm actually not that turned on by in real life. Yeah. And those have kind of just fallen out. Interesting. Like, I mean, just uh, the most general example is... Like large breasts was a fixation of mine from a young age in porn, mm -hmm. but in real life, like I still like boobs, but large breasts are not nearly as interesting to me in yeah. real life. Yeah, and see, I, I, some of those same things have happened to me too, and so me not being all the way recovered, I wonder sometimes if some of the things I'm into would like disappear a year from now because they're mm -hmm. not authentic, or maybe it's still like a porn thing lying around. I don't well, have know. you seen anything? I mean, you've been at this point two, two more than two years clean. Have you seen anything uh, diminish or disappear entirely? Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, like the I used to watch like just the awful blowjob scenes. You guys don't know what I'm talking about, like deep throat stuff. I am not into that at all. Like, really? Because I'm still kind of into that. Yeah. See, I'm not. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why. <laughs> I love that, <laughs> but. That was one of the things I noticed first. Huh. Um, I'm trying to think of others. Yeah, I'm sure there's others. But that one for sure. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And it's a yeah, really it's... interesting question, though. That's a really... Dude, yeah, do really... fetishes disappear? All that I'm sure about is that the journey away from porn and masturbation is pretty marvelous, and you'll... Learn a hell of a lot about yourself. Agreed. Yeah, it's true. It, 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 I mean, it starts out from a, a purely sexual standpoint, but at the end of the day, and I'm sure that uh, I, I feel it in my life, it affects larger issues of, of, of motivation and self-control, mm -hmm. yeah. which is applicable in every single area of your life. 
Oh, yeah. Every single part of my life is better now than it was before. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I don't... <laughs> uh, for anybody just starting the journey, I don't know that your, that your weird fetishes will ever go away. Um, for my part, my weird fetishes ended up being applicable in actual relationships, which blew my fucking mind. Uh, but, <laughs> but you will find that this changes your life on a more fundamental level than just what happens in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, oh, man. I would say that the biggest changes in my life, like, sure, it's great to be able to have sex now and to be able to have an erection with a woman, but the biggest changes have by far just been in how I interact with the world and my emotions, my emotional growth, my motivation. Yeah. I'm just how you relate to other people. Yeah. Exactly. How we talked about this in other episodes. I can listen to people now. I love listening to people. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, man. You're not like when I distracted by other thoughts. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you're, not, you're not stuck in your own head. You can actually have the time to open up and listen to someone else's head. Stuck in your yeah. own head. Yeah, I love that phrase because that's totally the way I was. That's the way I was. Is I couldn't mm-hmm. stop micromanaging. Like, oh shit, I don't know what to do with my hands. That was where I was when I was. Uh, back yeah. in the back in the day, and uh, the biggest <laughs> the biggest change in my life is when I started and before I started, I couldn't interact with strangers. It wigged me out. I was constantly thinking, "Am I standing right? What do I, what do, I do with my feet?" All this weird <laughs> shit. Mm-hmm. And and now I'm I'm a bartender. I deal with strangers every day. I start I have to talk to strangers every day, and the amount that the amount of money that I make is contingent upon how well I connect with strangers, and I'm good at it now. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great, man. That's awesome. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of room for growth, and you may find, for anybody starting out, that what starts as a very targeted experience, a targeted experiment, becomes uh, life-changing mm-hmm. in all aspects. And I think, and I think there's no one set way for this either. I mean, if you look at the three of us, we've all kind of come to different conclusions and had different experiences along the way too. Like, but it was we both started off with the same goal and the same journey. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's just a, it's just a Gary Wilson says it all the time. You just really need to feel out what rebooting means to you when you do it, and what you need, and what you're going for. Yeah, it's a hugely personal. Journey. I mean, if you think about it, <laughs> the journey to not touch your own dick, very personal. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound like it, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, or also, it sounds like it, but it's even more so. Yeah. <laughs> I've come to realize even more saliently recently is that not masturbating is a skill. No. And it's something you have to practice to get good at. Yeah. And a lot of people who are starting out on this journey, they relapse all the time and they think, oh, is it always going to be this hard? If it's always going to be this hard, is it even worth it? But I've heard someone else say this. I'm not the person who made this up, but someone said, temptation never gets any weaker, but you do get stronger. And that's absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, totally. I mean, porn, porn is free <laughs> and available. I mean, it's in our pockets most of the time. Um, <laughs> And it's incredibly stimulating, but that me i mean it means that the challenge is great, but by practicing taking on that challenge and not letting it uh, defeat you, not letting it convince you that you are unable to to overcome, you become stronger than the challenge mm-hmm. yeah and speaking of individual experiences, I saw this. HBO thing recently called Americans in Bed. Mm. Have you guys heard of this? I haven't. Sounds interesting. I've been in bed. Yeah. My buddy bought it on YouTube. <laughs> I didn't even know that you could buy things on YouTube, but my buddy bought it on YouTube and he let me watch it. And it's interviews with couples from around America in their beds, like not having sex or anything, just talking about their relationships and their sex lives. Interesting. And it's it's not, I wouldn't say it's triggering at all, but yeah. at least it wasn't for me. But it's just a fascinating look into these very personal aspects of these people's lives. Like one couple is a young Islamic couple who knew each other for 
like a year and a half or two years before they got married. And when he proposed to her, they had never touched or gone on a date or anything like that. <laughs> That's crazy. And up until marriage, they still hadn't touched. And when they got married, like we think of the night, the marriage night, it's time to have sex. But no, they didn't have sex. That was when what we would think of as the dating period began. Like now they could hold hands Whoa. and they could look into it, like stare lovingly into each other's eyes and have deep conversations just alone by themselves. And they didn't actually have sex for months after that. This is just what we were talking about before the show, with like the fluidity of sex, mm-hmm. sex and cultures and stuff. Oh, that's wild. It's so and weird. I'm not saying that that's the way it should be done for everyone, but it's just a fascinating window into how other people relate to relationships and sex. Did you pull anything else away from it? Was there... Oh, yeah. Almost every interview was really fascinating. Another couple, they'd broken up 26 times and got <laughs> together 27 times. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And they're, like, married now and... No, they're not. They're just, they're on time number 27. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Huh. And the guy was polyamorous and the woman wasn't, which is probably a seed of a lot of their yeah, I difficulties. See that causing some conflict. Yeah. And there was, like, this 85-year-old couple, and they were really interesting to hear from. Mm, I bet that was hot. <laughs> Fascinating, not hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, and I've become very open about learning about other people's personal sex lives this last year and talking about my own. So yeah, I don't really get awkward about it anymore. But some people are still. I know a lot of people are uncomfortable speaking openly or hearing openly about that. Yeah. No, definitely. Some people. Some people make some shiver and tense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we live in a time that is strangely Victorian about sex, if you know what I mean. At least in the United States, yeah. Well, yeah, in the United States, but the United States also has a weird kind of cultural influence over the rest of the globe. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it makes for strange attitudes that are variable, but as we're all, we're all obviously uh, Americans. um, But I feel it acutely lately, and especially since I started uh, NoFap, in that we, this is a culture of titillation where everybody's shaking their ass and everybody's wearing a bikini and whatnot. And you, you've got, you've got Paris Hilton selling you a hamburger in a bikini on a car hood, but at the same time, there's no sex. Mm-hmm. There's, it's all behind closed doors and it's all under this lid of, of pornography. Mm-hmm. Um, but we still haven't reached a point where we're open about sex. That's it. Yeah. yeah, it's the openness about sex. Because I was, I was like, it, I guess it depends on how you define how our culture. I feel like there's aspects of our culture that's extremely sexualized right now. Well, I mean, you re- <laughs> if you if you take the Romans, for instance, if you look at the Romans' relationship with sex, holy shit, we are are we ever Victorian? In what way? Like just the way that they had sex with each other, or they talked yeah. about it, or. Yeah, in that I, in ancient Rome, a politician's sex life was a matter of common course. It was a matter that could be brought up on the Senate floor. Oh, interesting. And it wasn't yeah. considered like, ah, oh, prying into this guy's life. No, it was, it was, uh, uh, <laughs> Wait, did you hear they tried doggy style some last of the weekend? centerpieces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's wild. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean. I look, I look at a civilization like like Greece or Rome, uh, where this you know like the soldiers were uh, having sex with each other. God, we were just like homosexuality so wasn't funny. even an issue. Yeah, Charlie and I were just talking about this before you joined up. Really? Yeah. yeah keep yeah. going. Up, well, you look yeah. at you look at those kind of examples and those differences in attitude, and it really paints our civilization in an embarrassingly puritanical kind of light yeah 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 the openness is just you you wish it would be more okay the fact that it's so hard for people to come out with their like severe sexual dysfunctions induced by porn and talk about it is kind of indicative of the openness of our culture right exactly so hard and taboo yeah yeah like everybody's got to be sexy but nobody can have sex yeah in the (laughs) 
<laughs> or if you do, you don't talk about it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I remember probably seven or eight years ago now that Super Bowl, Super Bowl football game when Janet Jackson was performing. Right. And she yeah. had her nipple slip. Yeah. Wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, her wardrobe <laughs> malfunction. And everyone exactly. freaked out. Everything was, was totally nipple. cool until her nipple came out. And what's that governing body? <laughs> what's that? Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so what's funny. that government body that uh, censors TV and regulates oh, FCC? FCC. Yeah. Oh, the FCC re- received more complaints than ever before. Over fifty thousand complaints from that. It's not that big of a deal. Man. And <laughs> like parents don't mind if their children watch horror movies where people are getting chopped up with axes or whatever, but see a nipple on the Super Bowl game and oh my god. I know. Oh yeah. James Bond kills 20 people in the movie, but yeah. he better not get his cock out. <laughs> <laughs> you put that away. <laughs> yeah, that's just blows my mind how accepting the United States is of, of violence, but how close we are to sex. People have made the, uh, at least I've seen forum posts on the argument, people try to say maybe that's part of the reason we often turn to porn and stuff like that, is we have such this mm-hmm. kind of repression of openness in this culture that you know, we have to get yeah. out. We have to vent through pulling up ujiz. dot com. Yeah, I wrote a chapter about that in my book, like chapter to parents, yeah, and how they have to start to relate to their children in this world in which porn is right in all of our living rooms. Yeah, and it's got to be a more open conversation. We have to get over our own embarrassment, and it can't just be one talk of the birds and the bees. It's got to be a continuing conversation where children feel comfortable going to their parents when they have questions rather than going to UGIS <laughs> or going to their friends who know nothing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. And right. I have a lot of hope because I think all of us, the three of us, I'm sure, will have a very different conversation about porn with our children than our parents had with us. Mainly, mainly because we'll have a conversation. Yeah. I mean, our parents. My dad. Even... My dad told me not to let mom find out. About what? Your... <laughs> porn use. Oh, okay. I thought you meant about like porn yeah. in general. <laughs> Don't let your mom know it exists. <laughs> uh, no. She would be dead. But it, and I don't blame him for that because he just didn't know about the dangers of modern day high speed internet porn. Yeah. Right. But now that we know, we've got to educate the young people. Absolutely. That's why I admire what Gabe is doing, speaking in schools. Yeah. yeah. Oh is he really? Gosh. Oh, if you guys, um, the audience doesn't know, Gabe on Reboot Nation put up his speakers page, and Charlie and I are both on there for speakers available to go wherever, as long as you'll pay for our transportation, probably, schools or yeah. whatever know. event you'd like. A little education about porn addiction, modern-day porn habits, that sort of thing. Interviews for articles and stuff too, if they want to email us. Yeah, I haven't gotten anything yet though. But um, I heard there's a guy. Is there like something? I can't remember. Are you involved with something that's happening soon with like a documentary or something, or maybe that's somebody else? Oh yeah, yeah. There's a German guy, and him and his partner are documentary filmmakers, and they're about to put out a Kickstarter to raise some funds to travel around the world and film with people to create this documentary about porn addiction and porn addiction recovery. Cool. So they'll be going to, well, they'll be filming with Daniel, our missing host, Mm -hmm. because he's in Germany and they're in Germany. Yeah. And they'll be filming with, um, coming to America, filming with Gabe, I believe, in Texas, and then coming to Oregon to film with me and with Gary Wilson, because we're both in Oregon. And I don't know, they come in to film with you, Charlie? I haven't gotten contacted by anybody, okay. but yeah, if they want to, I'm totally up for it. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm excited about that. I hope it really takes off. Yeah, and then on, on another note, I heard there's a lot of I don't know exactly what I've read the details. But there's a lot of new uh, research that's supposed to be coming out here in the next year. Uh, mm-hmm. Kind of not obviously not proving no one research proves anything, but it's it's enlightening the fact that porn and CD might exist. So, and I heard there's like four or five different things potentially coming out. There were two big ones last year that we talked about on this show, but... Does it exist? Uh, I'm just not sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really thinking low testosterone has been my issue recently. Yeah. <laughs> Which it could be. Everybody get checked out by a doctor. I'm not saying you shouldn't. <laughs> but, 
All right, so I think we have like uh, one more question, and then it's about an hour, so we'll just yeah. try to wrap up right after this question. Let me get it. Pull it up. Okay. Uh, can you please talk about the binge relapse cycle and how you avoid it? Kind of did. We talked about just sort of finding something to occupy your time with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the <laughs> best one. Yeah. Take an honest self-assessment and find out what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Get a goal. Get a mission, man. Do something. Exactly. I'll say that binging is attractive because, especially for people who use counters, if you relapse once, you're back to one. It's like you've lost everything, but that's mm-hmm. an illusion. That is an illusion. Do not believe that. Yeah. Really, but it's, I think it's, people need to really examine what happened during the relapse, what led up to it, why did it happen, and try to learn something from it. Try to make it an experience that you can use to lay another brick in the path before you and keep moving forward. Yeah. Rather than just seeing it as a waste, try to use it so that it doesn't happen again. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's a lot of what you're saying has mindfulness kind of littered all over it. Maybe mm-hmm. not littered, sprinkled on <laughs> it. Mindfulness took a shit on everything you just said. <laughs> but Yeah, mindfulness has been something I've thought about for years. and I meditate every day, not that long, like 10, 15 minutes. Cool. That's interesting. But, yeah. Yeah, they say that's Do like. Do you meditate, not, Charlie? Um. I don't like have formal sit downs. I think a lot about mindfulness and I think about my thoughts a lot during the day. Mm. Um, and this is another thing we could do a whole episode about. Yep. But, yeah. But yeah, I try and think about what I'm thinking about and what, like everything around yeah. me and stuff like that. But I don't know if it's like a formal session or anything. Right. Right. Um, and this other question is some guy just put this really long question on here that I can just answer this by myself. <laughs> and it's mainly directed at <laughs> Take me. Take it too. away. Take it away. <laughs> So I think that's about it. I'm going to check Reboot Nation really quick to see if anybody wrote on that one. Don't want to marginalize the audience. Let's go check. Come on, click on the thread. This episode brought to you by Balls. <laughs> balls. Making if you need something to roll around, choose Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Better than squares. I'll or throw right. in my plug here since we're... Yep. Again, Charlie, we're done. Yeah. No, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, my you can find me at addicted to internet com. That's where I post articles about all this and advice. And I'll put, of course, when this radio show is up, I'll link to that on my website. Mm-hmm. And check out check out your what is it, mystery box? Is that what it's called? Yeah, you can find that on my addicted to internet com as well. But if you just search porn addiction in YouTube, you'll see mystery box Noah Church, yeah. like the fifth result down. It's really good. I love how you can be so informative and funny at the same time. That's a really hard thing to do. <laughs> the John Stewart esque thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just me telling my life story in relation to porn and sex. Yeah. So if you really want to get to know me, go seek that video out. Cool. And you, sh- everybody should do it if they have time. And then Jack, any shout outs? Any last thoughts? Hmm. If you really want to get to know me, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you hear it here, folks. He doesn't want to know you. <laughs> so, uh, so I guess that's it for him. And um, I guess I have no shout outs either. We're gonna do hopefully some more of these soon. Post questions. Yeah, yeah. I have some ideas for more episodes if you guys want to bring me on again. <laughs> hey, we'd love to. It might be hard getting everybody on at the. Yeah, same absolutely. Time, so. Um, and I just want to kind of do more. I really miss doing this mm-hmm. three or four months that I didn't do it. So then I just love kind of, I don't know. I don't feel like when I'm answering posts or anything on the websites that I'm doing much, I answer the same question every single time. So often that I have like, like, uh, templates of answers yeah. that I copy and paste into <laughs> certain places. So I feel like there's a better way to people to listen and hear. Mm-hmm. So yes, yeah, we'll get well, you on here, but we'll sign we out. We love right you now. all. We wish you the best. Adios. Tune back in. Peace next week. All right, see you, everybody. <laughs>